Hey everyone, it's Dabacab here, and I am back with another Afterwatch. This time, the fan is Alpha has sent in some Mercy gameplay footage for us to check out. Unfortunately, this is 720p, so sorry about that. But uh, Afterwatch just isn't popular enough for me to have you know tons and tons of clips to choose from. But that's actually good news for you. That means that if you want me to analyze your gameplay footage, then you'll basically be at the top of the list if you send in 1080p footage because I'm I'm sort of starved for footage at the moment. Okay, so one of the advantages of Mercy is that she can, uh, since her beam is effective no matter which way you're looking, while she's healing someone or damage boosting someone, she can check her corners, look for flanking opportunities, and just generally keep an eye out on the enemy team. One thing a Mercy should never do is just stare pointlessly at the person that they're healing. Like, what's what's the point? Like, you've got a second pair of eyes. Look for Genjis, look for Tracers, look for Barris who are trying to flank you. She might be doing that now. Um, I'm not I'm not really sure. It's so early in the match that there aren't there isn't really a chance for any fl uh, any flankers to get up here. So I'm not sure what she's looking for. Uh, past that, it, it's not really super effective to do a healing beam on a fully healed people, especially a Reinhardt with a shield up. You should be damage boosting more aggressively. Um, I'd probably spend a little bit more time up with that Widowmaker because a damage boosted Widowmaker does a lot of damage. But like here, why, why are you healing the Reinhardt? What is that accomplishing? At least damage boost the Junkrat. Ideally, damage boost the Widow. Try and try and do something more effective with your beams. I mean, think about it. If you're healing a full health character, then you are doing absolutely nothing. Here, I like coming into support. You're staying by the door so you can get a quick escape. I think jumping down into that little corner is probably not the best idea because you could get kind of cornered in there. Kind of like you are right now. They didn't really capitalize on it. So just be try and focus more on uh, being in a position where you can escape. Here, I would be looking up at that Pharah. Once you've got your heal beam on someone, you know, it's on them. You don't have to stare at the Reinhardt to make sure they're being healed. They're being healed. You can look up safely at the Pharah to see, is she shooting at you? Is she shooting at the Reinhardt? Because if she's shooting at you, that means you need to take cover in that room and try and try and get to safety. So just put a little bit more emphasis on looking at the enemy rather than looking at, at your friends. Like, I feel like I haven't seen an enemy in the last 10 or 15 seconds. I have no idea where they are right now. There might be one in that room. There's I can hear some fighting, but I don't really know. So here, oh, okay. So she jumps down. There's like three people to her right, but I have no idea what they're doing. I don't know where that Reinhardt went. All right, the Reinhardt charged into the point, but the Reinhardt could have just as easily charged the Mercy and easily killed her right there. There's not much the Mercy could have done. Taking cover behind this Reinhardt shield is smart. I don't know why she's looking down at the ground while she's doing that though. Like, put, lift your eyes. Try and try and see what's going on around you. I think she's holding on to that ult to try and get a better ult charge off. But since there are so many people, I, I think it might have been a little bit safer to just get it off. Hopefully get some value out of it. But she kind of missed her opportunity, unfortunately. God, there's four on point. That's a little bit dangerous. She gets off ult and dies to Widowmaker. But we did not know that Widowmaker was there, so we can't really necessarily blame the Mercy for that. Kind of got caught off guard. Let's see this shot. Oh my god. I don't, know if that was a, I don't know if that was a really good shot or a really lucky shot, but that was uh, impressive either way. Okay, so once again, let's not let's not heal the Reinhardt with his shield up. He's got full health. At least damage boost someone. Damage boost the Junkrat. Damage boost, probably not the May, she's not going to do a whole lot. But the, the Junkrat would be a great choice. I think that you as a player tend to slightly... Okay, that Reaper... Granted, Reapers are really stealthy, they want to be sneaky, so there's probably a good reason why he snuck up on you. But if you'd be a little bit more aware of your surroundings and actively seek out where the enemies are, then you might have seen that coming, you might have survived, and you might have been able to get off a good res afterwards. This, smart to, uh, this switch to D.Va is understandable. For those of you who don't know, for a while actually, the go-to pro strategy was to six stack diva whenever you got overwhelmed with the point because she can boost to the point and then she can defense matrix to stay alive and then even if you do kill the diva in her mech suit she just pops out so she's great at buying time 
Anyways, back to your Mercy gameplay. I think you tend to over prioritize healing. Like, yes, it's Mercy's job to heal people. That is correct. She wants to keep everyone alive and healthy. But you put too much emphasis on it. You don't have to bend over backwards to make sure every single one of your teammates is at 100% health. Because what you've also got to focus on winning. You've got to focus on, you know, killing the opponents and surviving yourself. And you're caring so much about healing that you're putting yourself in awkward situations and you're not damage boosting when you should. Okay, round two, we are on attack, and good news, we have a Pharah. Pharah is excellent in, a, in Temple of Anubis because there are, so, there are those tall vertical pillars on point B, which gives her a ton of cover, a ton of cover. This, oh man, this is a huge overextend. You should have uh, hung out behind that little U-shaped wall. You're lucky that you didn't get caught because you basically didn't have an escape there. This is a really interesting spot for Mercy because she can dash up to the wall but not go over it and just sort of fall beneath the wall and take cover behind the actual archway herself, but, but she didn't do that. I would have I would have more aggressively stayed on the Pharah. Pharah and Mercy is a really brutal combo. You could really do some damage here. But you're with um sticking with the the Reinhardt. Okay. I, I don't know I don't know why you're leaving them. They're expecting you to be behind them. You went after the Zarya and the Junkrat, which are really far away from you, and they ended up peeling on their own anyways. So, this is what I was this is what I was saying earlier. You put too much emphasis on healing your teammates. They weren't in any danger. They weren't going to die. They were basically by themselves. So you abandoned two of your teammates who were about to go into a fight and fight for the point. So you could go, you know, like what heal 50 hit points. Like what's what's the point? You know, stick stick with your teammates. You had invested enough in that push that they probably went forward thinking you were behind them. So they could have been like caught out and just died two v six and been like, hey, what what the hell? Where's my team? Where's everyone else? And the answer is they're way back in the back, healing pointlessly. So don't don't get blinded by yellow health bar. Just because someone is a hundred isn't at a hundred percent health, that doesn't mean they need your help. They can they can get health packs. They don't need to be perfectly topped off. Other people might need your healing more. Other people might need your damage boost more. So just uh, just try to be aware of that. Here, um, it's understandable to use your healing beam. Since you're so heavily invested in this team fight, I would be focusing very intently on cover. That, that's my number one concern is I can res people after the fight goes sour. That Pharah ulted in the middle of that. If you focus a little bit more on hanging out with your Pharah, which you probably should be doing as a Mercy, you could have damage boost, boosted that and done a lot of damage. A lot of damage. So, um, I'm not sure why you're so focused on healing the Pharah, or I'm not sorry, why you're so focused on healing the Reinhardt and the Zarya. Um, the Pharah the needs you, man. The Pharah can be doing a lot of damage. There's tons of aerial cover in Temple of Anubis. Tons. Tons of aerial cover. Okay, so they have a Bastion now. They have a Bastion. Pharah is a really strong counter to Bastion. Because Pharah has no damage drop off. Her missiles are accurate. They don't have any bullet drop. So she can take a really distant position and just snipe rockets into Bastion from afar. The problem is, when she does this, is she slowly gets like flinked away by Bastion's damage. Um, so, the Bastion could theoretically sort of win in the long term, but if she's got a Mercy backing her up, there is absolutely no way that a Bastion can survive a sniping Pharah. So once I saw that Bastion, my priority as Mercy would be like, okay, Pharah, where are you? Me and you, let's... Okay, you saw you saw Pharah... Um, Rocket Brajan on screen. It would have been nice if you could have just damage boosted her to help you cut through the enemies. So, in this situation, you definitely need to focus a little bit less on healing and a little bit more on hanging out with your Pharah and playing the objective. You're, you're not just healing. That isn't Mercy's only role. Your, your, your objective right now in the game is to break through these defenses and the the most troubling defense that they have is the Bastion. Reinhardt can't deal with Bastion at all. In fact, uh, Bastion's a very strong counter to Reinhardt. I'm not really sure why that Reinhardt doesn't switch off. 
Uh, Zarya can do it, but in this scenario, I'm not really sure how she would do it because... Um, I don't know why this Reaper's sniping from the back. Like, what's... He should be trying to flank or something. Um, but Barrack can. So, also Junkrat can. Junkrat could go down into that little, like, divot or over to the right where he is now and just find a position where he can lob grenades over the wall and safely hit the Junkrat from... Or, safely hit the Bastion from afar. So, you should be supporting them. You should be helping them do one of those things. But instead, you're healing these tanks who... For some reason, are insisting on. Um, all right, this, this, uh, this res. I don't think that's a very strong res. Basically, all you did was save two people, a walk back from the point. But you weren't like in the middle of a push. What you want to do is save your ult for when it matters, not save your ult for when you can res a lot of people. Like, if you're, if everyone on the team died right now, right now, and you could get a five-man res right now. I actually don't know if I would do it because all that would do is save your team like 10 or 15 seconds. What you want to do is you want to res when you're on the point after the enemy team has invested resources in killing you. Because then when you res them all, they've wasted all those resources. So like, let's say you all push in, they spend two or three ults, they kill off three or four of your people, then you ult and you're back to your full strength but they're down the two ults. But Rezzing back when back when you're at the entrance, that just means effectively that you just lost your ult and you didn't have to walk 15 seconds. I mean, you've got four minutes to go. There's no huge rush. So just try and think of your, your ult more offensively and less... Um, I can understand that dash in to, to raise the Reinhardt under the theory that you will die, but perhaps the Reinhardt will, will get the Bastion. I was hoping he would charge in and and get the bastion afterwards, but that did not work, unfortunately. So at this point, I think the biggest problem with this team is your strategy. What you're trying to do is walk in slowly behind the Reinhardt shield, down the front door, which works in a lot of situations. That's, that's a fine strategy, but not against a bastion. A bastion will just tear through the bastion or the Reinhardt shield. And you got like you guys aren't adapting to it. You need to be coming in through a side position. If you're insistent on staying with the Reinhardt, which is okay, if you want to stick with the Reinhardt in this area, then don't come in the front door where the where the Bastion can see you. Do something else, man. You guys need to either um, uh, take a, an attack vector where you can get closer to the Bastion, probably in through the left, or you should focus on killing the Bastion from afar with Junkrat or with Farah, but as it stands, you guys are just feeding into this. You're getting countered super hard. That's not your fault as Mercy. I realize this is another waste of ult. They've invested no resources in this. They're just winning. They didn't ult. They're not in danger. It's just, you just saved two of your teammates a 15 second walk. You need to use it when it hurts the enemy, not not when it helps the team, because every time you ult, it's gonna help your team, right? Because it's it's gonna bring people back to life. But what you wanna do is help your team and hurt your opponents. And that ult did not hurt your opponents whatsoever. They're like, okay, so what? We'll just kill them again. We haven't lost anyone. We're not we're not at risk. So God, I don't think I've seen you. That was a nice dodge. I, I don't know why that Reinhardt turned around. He could have easily killed you there. I don't think I've seen you stick on your Farah for more than like 5 or 10 seconds of this whole match. I'm not sure why. Mercy and Farah are dream team. You should be best buds. You should be flying around the pillars and sniping the Bastion and flanking and supporting each other. Um, but instead you're investing in the Reinhardt. Uh, Keep in mind that as, as a Mercy or as a support, in some small way, depending on how perceptive and observant your teammates are, you're sort of, you can sort of enable or disable your teammates. Like, perhaps the reason why Zarya and Reinhardt feel emboldened to walk down the front door is because you're always there supporting them. But if you went off with the Pharah and the Reinhardt and Zarya are just there by themselves trying to walk in the front door pointlessly, and it's not no longer working because they're not getting healed, they may think, wow, this is not working. I'm just getting my ass handed to me by the Bastion. The Mercy's off with the Pharah doing something else. Maybe I should change my strategy 
and do something else instead. Which is good. You want to change your strategy. But that's that's not happening. You guys are trying the same... You guys have walked in the front door like five or six times now and it's not working. How many times <laughs> How many times do you have to try the same strategy before you realize it's, it's, it's not an effective strategy? So, I mean, I like that you are very team focused. You're almost too team focused, but that's not necessarily a, a, a bad thing all the time. You, you've pinged that we need to group up. That's good instincts. So you, you've got the potential to be a very team focused and very leadery as a support player. But you just got to you, you need to focus a little bit more on learning who you should support when you need to ab abandon your teammates that aren't being effective and um, just ask yourself where where am I most needed not not who has the lowest health because that's not a measure of value it's who can I best support which which of my teammates is doing well who's my star teammate because I want to help them I want to help them do their job all right well hopefully that was helpful this has been an Afterwatch series. Once again, if you want to send your footage, just email it to Dabacab and I will take a look. Dabacab out.